The thing is that we take it from a completely other end. We take it bottom up, and that's one of the major messages of this day and of this morning. I would like uh, to present to you first uh, our participants in the press conference. That's um, Professor Jon Marin from the Mozarteum from Salzburg, who represents particularly the cultural part here and the artistic part, which is so important for us. Secondly, I would like to present Mrs. Um, Dr. Božena Bednaříková from the Czech Republic, from the University of Palacki from uh, Olomouc, who is a bohemist and represents the uh, Czech Lusatian Association, Lusitska Alliance Česká Republika. Then I would like to present uh, Dr. Andreas Kluge, who is one of the founders and members of the Srpsky Sejm, which is the elected representation and body of the Lusatian Sorbs and Wends in the German Saxony and Brandenburg. And last but not least, our friend, Marek Helkowski, who is the president of uh, the Lusatian Association from Proland, from Wroclaw. The um, European integration needs civil society. That's one of our major messages. And us, the Slavs, the Slavonic nations, Slavonic people, would like to contribute today in the 21st century in a special way to that. For that reason, my association, my Russia's movement, Slavonic Europe, initiated together with all partners here, a new approach to the European integration, which is, as I already mentioned, a bottom-up approach, which would like to be based and to use the um, uh, European ethnicities and minorities, the small languages in the European Union, in order to enhance, uh, better say, to give a new impulsion to the European integration. Instead of starting in the capitals from the centers of the European member states, what's uh, the common politics uh, for many decades, we decided to propose something completely different. We would like to start from the borders because at the borders, there are the limits of the states, of the nations, and because the borders needs a crossing. There, on the other hand, are many crossroads. There are many triangles, even quadrilangles, and that are the places where the togetherness has to start. So we would like to start in Lusatia with the Lusatian Sobs and Wends, which live in the triangle between Germany, Czech Republic, and Poland. Lusatia is a three country region, historically and today, which composes and is um, composed out of uh, the countries I just mentioned. And that's not the only case in Europe. There are several other cases in the Adria, in the Balkans, in uh, the Atlantic, and even here in Belgium, in Eastern Belgium. So we uh, set up an initiative coming and going from the Black Sea to the Atlantic. And this initiative starts in this Lusatia Triangle with um, the um, uh, Slavonic nation, of the Lusatian Sorbs. That's an um, irradiation approach. And we are very happy and glad to see that we really succeeded to irradiate already um, uh, in the last um, weeks, months, sometimes even days, because there are more and more people who would like to join us. Small language uh, groups, small nations, small minorities, minorities, as uh, the world says it, which are happy and delighted to contribute as a democratic entities to the European integration. That was even for me who worked for 11 years in the European institutions, in the European Commission, it was a really a new experience to see people, Europeans, be so uh, enthusiastic about doing 
something bottom up, it's a civil society for the European togetherness. And it was all even easy to get them, easy to put them in and get them in on board. And you will see our partners now from the so-called application areas uh, later on in the framework of our workshop, which will continue after this press conference. So this is a completely new approach. This is a change of paradigm. And for that reason, I would like to give now the floor to Dr. Andreas Klugen to develop his personal and the situation from the elected representation of the Sevsky Sejm from the German Lusatia. Dr. Kluge, you have the floor. Yes, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, the, the point to make is the paradigm change. I think we have been all living in Europe and take the achievements of Europe for granted. Um, we see, however, increasingly Europe being menaced by nationalist confrontations, which have led to a disintegration of the, the EU 28 as we knew it, you know, all of the Brexit, and we are all aware of further, uh, further um, conflicts the European Union is uh, confronting. So we as minority, uh, minority EU citizens, uh, this is a term I would like to correct from this, uh, from this place here. We prefer to say regional cultures and we as uh, affiliated uh, EU citizens to regional cultures have a very special set of needs and a very special set of mind. The needs are that minority cultures, which are not, or regional cultures, which are not part of the national state main culture, have a particular need in order to be protected by human rights, by rule of law, and by democracy. Therefore, um, minority or regional culture affiliated EU citizens are particularly uh, interested in a strong transnationally acting European Union. So to recognize this, we strongly advise, and that is uh, the, the message of the paradigm change we would like to launch, that the European Union should see the regional culture uh, populations as natural allies for a strong European Union, which is, as I said, particularly mentioned by nationalist movements, which change or which may change as a result of national elections. So the question is, um, how can we achieve that? We propose really that the EU directly um, talks to the regional cultures and their democratically elected representatives, because that is um, where democracy takes place. Um, if we speak of regional cultures, we also should note that regional culture practice is something particularly rooted in the civil society, where, um, where adherence to a regional culture, which means essentially practicing a known language, which is not an official EU language, um, means that this takes place essentially in the civil society that is the private sphere of the families where these languages are practiced. So civil society is very important as a substrate for the regional cultures and civil society and a better rootedness in the civil society is what the European Union wants. Um, and uh, there's a number of initiatives to strengthen the civil society. Therefore, I think uh, the regional cultures as civil society rooted are a, a natural ally for the European Union to achieve this, uh, this connection to the, to the civil society. So democracy and civil society are two, um, two aspects which we are firmly uh, convinced that those are um, the, the elements which we need to strengthen in order to come to a European Union which is more resilient um, as a transnational, uh, as a transnational um, 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 confederation of, of countries to the, uh, to the uh, threat stemming from nationalist tendencies. So I think that is the main message. We want the European Union to talk also to the regional cultures and not only to the national states. And that's uh, what we want to achieve with the Lusatia GLOW initiative, which is just one example to give a name to this pan-European movement, which is actually uh, followed very closely and very sympathetically by many regional cultures across Europe. Thank you. 
Mr. Kruger, thanks a lot for your first statement. Now I would like uh, to give the floor to Professor Jon Marin from the Mozarteum in Salzburg to tell us how he sees uh, the question of European integration through regional cultures, minorities, ethnicities, um, linked to arts and linked in particular to music. Jon, you have the floor. Hello, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. One of the beauty of the, the idea of Europe is that it's based on, in principle, is based on recognizing the identity of uh, minorities, majorities. It's not a melting pot. It's uh, unity and diversity or diversity in unity. Uh, depends how you want to put it. Um, of course, every ethnic or national group is characterized by language. That's the very important thing that goes to that goes to identity, who one is. On the other hand, uh, communication between uh, different ethnic groups and so on has a, let's say, a shortcut or a, a more flexible way, and that's the musical language, because the musical language has always characterized a way of communication. Making music together was always related to peace, to harmony. Harmony is part of music. So it enhances a lot the way of communicating, the way of being together, the way of respecting each other, like in a symphonic orchestra. I've had this uh, experience with, uh, um, now it's a national project in Romania, it's called Cantus Mundi, and nowadays there are about 75,000 children from different uh, minorities or ethnic groups, uh, social standards, and so on. And uh, they change the languages, all the songs and everything. Uh, they learn each other uh, the dialect or another language. And uh, it's amazing the result. We have seen it over 10 years that it has a serious impact. Very many of these children now are adults and they have a totally different way of seeing the other, which on my opinion represents the European way of seeing each other. It's not based upon statistics. How many are you in that ethnic group? Are you few? Are you a lot? For instance, in Switzerland, the Romance is the fourth national language and is spoken by 60,000 people. But it still is recognized as a national language and uh, respected as such. Nobody goes into the statistics in order to give the right of existence. Music now has two different aspects, the musical language. It's, of course, related to the identity, to religion, to celebrations and so on. And that's the folklore. And then comes the communicating and circulating the values that actually characterize every single nation, be it minority or majority, how you circulate, how do you recognize what's the common ground on which we can meet and open to, uh, to being together, to being aware. It's an exercise uh, through the musical language. It's an exercise of mindfulness. I am here and I'm making music with somebody. I respect him so that he respects me. And uh, I believe, and that's why I'm here, I believe a lot that the power of music uh, is uh, one of the elements, one of the key elements that can help a lot uh, European integration and the uh, right to be alike with all our peers. Thank you. Professor Marin, thanks a lot for your words, which uh, show really what uh, we want. We want to use in a holistic way all means we can in Europe, but not only the political ones, not only the economic ones. We want to use the whole scale of our European civilization. And I think really that the regional cultures are one of the best or are the best places who can um, bring that as ambassadors uh, to the entire co uh, continent. Now I would like to give the floor to Dr. Bojana Benazikova from the Czech Republic, from the Palatsky University of uh, Olomouc to tell us her view as the president and the founder, co-founder for the, from the Lusatian uh, uh, Alliance in the Czech Republic, her view on the topic of uh, regional cultures and ethnicities and uh, their specific situation, especially linked to Lusatia and else in the Czech Republic. Bojina, you have the floor. Uh, dear ladies and gentlemen, uh, 
I would like to greet you on behalf of Lužická Aliance České republiky, that is uh, Lusatian Aliance of the Czech Republic, and at the same time as the coordinator uh, of um, the pilot project Lusatia Glow uh, in the Czech Republic. Uh, Lusatska Alliance, Lusatian Alliance, uh, was established to promote to a company uh, to organize and to support all initiatives, not just in the Czech Republic, but also in Germany, in Poland, but elsewhere uh, throughout Europe uh, to help the development of self-awareness and of cooperation of small nations in Europe. Uh, as already was said here, uh, the Lusatian Serbs are a very good example of such cooperation. And uh, me as a Czech, I would like to stress that there is something special uh, in the linkage between both nations. Uh, we are attached historically. Imagine from the 14th to the 17th century, both Lusatias, both territories of the nation uh, uh, were uh, the part of crown of the kingdom of Bohemia. And the Bohemian kings also established several, several important cities in the region. Uh, another issue is linguistics. Um, uh, the language of Lusatian Serbs uh, is uh, Western Slavonic languages and is uh, mm, uh, most closely linked to the Czech language. And we can demonstrate it very quickly. Uh, when we speak together, we spoke our own national languages and we understand each other. Um, we are also attached emotionally, why not to say this? And uh, I think we can be considered as, as com compatriots of Lusatian Serbs. So we dare to say uh, we can bring a new impetus to Europe and to its integration. And that's it. Thank you for your attention. Bojano, thanks a lot. Now I would like to give the floor to our friend Marek who came from Poland, from Wroclaw, to tell us about his views of um, the Polish Lusatia, since he is the founder and uh, the president of uh, the Luzicki Alliance from um, Poland, and to tell us how he sees um, his possible contribution and the contribution of the Luzicki Alliance from Wroclaw to the European integration and to what we would like to do all its peace, harmony, and a rich cultural life. Marek, you have the floor. Okay. Is uh, oh yeah okay. Right, right now is good. Uh, I'm in very very hard and bad situation because I can only repeat almost everything the other speakers uh, have spoken right now until until now. Uh, I will say the following. Uh, few thousand kilo, what, square kilometers uh, in Poland were historically Lusatia. Uh, we have, uh, we understand, we know the history. Uh, we are only a few in Poland. More, I will say we have more uh, Lusatia lover, lovers as Lusatians, but uh, uh, this is important uh, from our side to protect this historical buildings and and everything what 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 was left after the war uh, in the territory of Poland. We have. I I know the problematic of of, of Lusatian Serbs many many years. I have cooperated also with <coughs> Andreas. I was uh, a long time by Serbs Kaludova Strona, and. Uh, we, and I personally, I was living in Germany and in Poland. So I know, I understand how important it is that you understand two countries to a little bit different mentalities. And uh, surely the Lusatian Serbs, a little bit different mentality as the Germans, the Poles and so on. But 
This is uh, very important to accept it, to accept the other language, culture, and to understand the history and the pr problematic of the nations. Lusatia is the best uh, sample, we will do it much more stronger, of possible cross-border integration. Because, you know, when we, when we will connect people, connect uh, us organizatively, no one will start a war or just stupid nationalistic discussions, yeah? Because uh, this is also very important uh, today with all these small nationalist uh, movements in Europe. I will say uh, we are a few people. We have a rich plan to what we want to do, what we want to, how we want to do. And we understand the subject of Lusatia in Poland. We understand the problems of Lusatia in Germany. And we will learn the Lusatian uh, uh, subjects in, in Czech Republic. This is something new for me because I, I'm, I'm, I love Czech language also, but as, as Pani Bednacikova, yeah, as, as the, uh, Mrs. Bednacikova knows. And uh, we have, I, I can, I, 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 I have no, and I guess you have heard what, what we want to do. Yeah? I, just, I, can, I can say we, we do it too, yeah. Uh, this is always the problems when, when somebody is talking too long. Now, it was very, many years ago, uh, was was a joke. Yeah, two girls are talking about a uh, guy. Oh, yeah, no, he's NATO. What NATO? Not attractive talking only. No? <laughs> That's uh, um, uh, talk too long is it's 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 not not too good. So that's everything. Markus, thanks a lot for your uh, speech and your statement. So, ladies and gentlemen, you can see there's already here a big um, togetherness, uh, despite the fact that each order of these speakers is uh, very different. But we have really found a common language. The three of us, uh, Bojena, Marek, and uh, Andreas, uh, we are speaking Slavonic languages. And uh, indeed, um, normally, if we have a um, small talk uh, framework uh, discussion, we don't need any translator, actually. And that's great. And Jon, he is speaking the musical language all the time, mm -hmm. which is then uh, uniting even more for that. So it's all over languages. And that's really something which we consider as new in the framework of uh, the European integration is the emphasis on the common small languages, these cross-border languages mainly, which are really a good ambassadors because language is not only logical understanding, as you know, language is mentality, language is culture, language is a feeling as well. So that is the chance for Europe to be taken very seriously. Last but not least, and we have seen it already now, because of this enormous motivation of um, the regional cultures and of the peoples. The motivation is enormous from several reasons. And maybe the main reason is that all of them, they want to be free and live in a free democratic uh, setting. That's what all of us we want. And they, because of their uh, of not easy history, are uh, very much and as particularly uh, 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 sensitive for that. And I think that's a chance as well for the European integration to take that as a starting point of um, often small communities, but very intensive communities and very convinced communities. We would like to, and we have already done it, to present this, uh, our new approach as a candidate for a European Union pilot project for the year 2023. For that reason, we are in contact uh, with uh, European institutions to whom we offered this um, uh, pr uh, proposal. And we would be very happy if that would uh, fall uh, on a fruitful ground and it would, that would be taken here in Brussels too seriously. And that's actually one of the reasons why we are here, because we want to be present and we want to enter into discussion. Thank you very much for your attention. And now I would like to ask all of you
for any questions. Everything is clear. Okay, all, all to better. So thank you very much um, uh, to the speakers. Thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen, to you for your time. And I would like to invite you in um, 15, 20 minutes uh, time after a small pause to our workshop where we will uh, present to you in uh, more detail what now here more generally we've been talking about. Thank you very much. Thank you.